Hello, today I want to demonstrate something that can go wrong and catch the unwary working on Betacam SP and digital Betacam tapes. Let's play this tape. Well, it's working, but there's several things wrong with it. The picture quality is terrible. And that isn't quite a one kilohertz tone, is it? So what could be wrong here? You know, the colors there, it's sort of right. So what could be wrong with this tape? Well, there's nothing wrong with the tape and there's nothing wrong with the player. Next, I'm going to play the same tape on this uh, DVW-A510P, which is a digital Betacam player that can also play analog tapes. And what do we get? Pretty similar, actually. It's sort of working, but the results are rubbish. Lots of dropouts doesn't sound right something wrong with the picture okay so that's playing Betacam SP tape that's what it should look like next let's try a digital Betacam tape on the same machine just rewind the tape for a moment we can see this from the tape counter, both on there and on the screen, that there's a recording on the tape. Let's press play and see what we get. Nothing. No picture. And it's flashing LTC here. So still, we have some problems going on. This is a different tape. What's going on? We're going to try a different machine. We've got a Sony J3 uh, compact player. Uh, there's a similar machine called the J30, which is a slightly more modern one, but they have the same basic functionality. And this one has an SDI output, uh, which is connected at the moment to this Canopus ADVC 1000, which is turning that uh, to uh, DV stream firewire, which we're going to be able to capture here. Um, I do have, of course, uh, SDI capture equipment as well, but right now this is what we're using. Let's start with the analog tape. So this is a Betacam SP recording. So again, we have a terrible playback picture uh, of this tape on the uh, J3. That's the Betacam SP tape. Let's try the DigiBeta one. Again, we're getting a time code, but no playback, and it's flashing the um, symbols there on the audio. I'll get you a closer look at that. You see, it's flashing the uh, VU meter readout on the uh, left-hand part of the display there, but it clearly has a valid recording. So what's the problem? Well, actually, I can show you the problem, and it's lit up right there. You see on the display there, it says 625, well, this tape isn't, it's a 525 line recording, NTSC. And the machine doesn't seem to have the intelligence to switch itself over. So let's switch it over. Okay, I'll stop that recording. In fact, I'll eject the tape and I'll go through the sequence that's necessary to switch this machine over to 525 line operation. And it's similar on the J30. We could do it just on this display, but it's easier if we have a monitor connected. Shift and then the menu button. Scroll through to 013. Not H13 here, which is a readout, but 013. And we need to press this button here. And it says 525 system select off. Rotate that until it says on. And now it says push the set button. So we will push the set button. Now, pressing the jog shuttle down, we can rotate this until we get, in this case, 5 to 5, which is what we want. Press the set button again. Now it's ready to operate in 5 to 5 line, but we have to power cycle it.
This is now in 525 line operation. Our capture system is most unhappy because we are capturing with this Canopus unit. So I now need to change that as well. So I've left myself a list here. Menu 19 I need to go into. Video standard, enter. It says it's on 625. I need to change that to, how do I change it? No, not by dip switch. Here we go, <laughs> those arrows. Uh, we can say um, 525 zero IRE, which is Japan, Japanese NTSC. We want 7.5, which is USA NTSC in this case. Enter, and we need to power cycle that one too. So now we have uh, a 525 line test signal coming from the DigiBeta player and it's being converted from SDI to DV Firewire here for our particular purposes uh, and that's configured for NTSC as well. So now we should be able to play the tapes. Again we'll start with the analog one. And now we have playback without loads of dropouts. It's running at the correct speed. Nice clean image. And we'll try the uh, DigiBeta. And we have proper playback of that signal too. And just for completeness, this is what we get if we play a PAL tape if the machine's configured for NTSC and it's an even worse result. Now, of course, we need to reverse the process. So, uh, put this back to 65 line operation. And similarly, switch this back. Step across to 625. Power cycle that. This has a habit of switching itself from DV to SDI, and in this case I want SDI to DV, so I just have to press that button. And that's now ready to operate in PAL mode again. Now you might say, how can this be? How can it be that uh, Betacam SP so very nearly does work when you play an NTSC tape on a PAL machine? Because most formats, unless you have a multi-standard player, or for example with later VHS machines, they were designed to be able to play NTSC in PAL tapes, how can it be that it so nearly works? And the answer is because it's a component video format. The luminance and chrominance, or the brightness and the, the color content, are recorded on separate um, stripes on the tape, separate tracks on the tape. So it doesn't care that much what uh, format the recording of the color is, it will just do its best to play it. However, it is thrown by the wrong amount of uh, lines in the picture and the wrong amount of frames per second. So it plays the tape slow, which is why the one kilohertz test tone sounds low. And the bottom of the picture looks particularly bad because it's kind of run out of picture uh, before it gets to the end of the 625 lines image. And the dropout compensator doesn't work properly, which is part of the reason the image looks so rough. So you might say, well, what about other professional formats? Uh, would this work, or sort of try to work, in those cases? And it might be, for example, with uh, the Panasonic M2 format, that if you tried to play an NTSC tape on a PAL machine, it would give you a bad but sort of working result. I don't have any NTSC tapes to try that. The, the DigiBeta tape, it could detect there was a recording, but unfortunately didn't have the intelligence either on the uh, DVW-A510P nor the J3 player, it, neither machine had the intelligence to say, I can tell this is an NTSC recording, and that's a bit of a shame. So what about if we try a similar trick with uh, Umatic? Well, that won't be anything like DigiBeta or Betacam SP. And the reason is that Umatic actually is more like a domestic format. In fact, it's not that dissimilar from beta, domestic Betamax. Uh, and 
as a result of which the colour information is completely irretrievable if it's in the wrong uh, television standard. Uh, we'll demonstrate that. An easy way to demonstrate that actually is I've got a multi-standard machine. So uh, let's put a tape in and play it in the wrong standard and see what we get. Here we have a multi-standard player. There are some limitations around this. It doesn't play high band tapes and this might be a high band tape. So let's start with uh, playing a, a normal PAL tape on this machine which is set for PAL operation and it plays. Strangely I was trying to demonstrate <laughs> if you switch to CCAM we should get a black and white picture uh, and if I flick it to CCAM actually I still get colour so I was a bit surprised at that I don't know how that works but if we flick it to NTSC so it's now playing a PAL tape with an NTSC setup you just get a scrambled mess. Similarly, if we try to play a NTSC tape with this machine in the PAL condition, again, we'll get a scrambled mess. Actually, this is a digital audio recording, so if I flick it to uh, the NTSC mode, we actually get a digital audio recording pattern, which uh, I can play on different equipment. Now you'll have noticed that I configured the J3 compact player to switch between NTSC and PAL, but the DVW-A510P and all the machines in those se that series can't be reconfigured uh, between NTSC and PAL so readily. They are purchased in whatever TV system you want to use. Anyhow, I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, learning a little bit about mixing up NTSC and PAL tapes on Umatic, Betacam SP and DigiBeta. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.